What's going on, family? Y'all know who it is. This is Tripsy, representing Tripsy Beast Production. We're all about making our dreams become into reality, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Hopefully, you guys are doing great wherever it is that y'all are watching all across the world. I'm doing great because I know that y'all asked, so thanks for asking. And Happy New Year! It's a big year for bigger and better things than we did last year, right? So just make that aware for yourself, man, and just let's strive to be the best that we can be, all right? But in today's video, we will be talking about how we can use Logic Pro stock plugins to be able to master our tracks in about seven minutes. Sounds quick enough? Let me run y'all through that stuff. I'm gonna take y'all to my window so that y'all can see these top four plugins that we're gonna be using. It's only four, right? So we're talking about the single band EQ. We're talking about the compressor. We're talking about the multi-presser. We're gonna talk about the adaptive limiter. Those are only four things that you need. I'm gonna show y'all the presets on how I go about using them, Trip C certified to be able to put all of your stuff on streaming websites like Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, whatever streaming softwares that are out there. All right, so if y'all are brand new to the channel, I'm gonna say it again, welcome, my name is Trip C. We're all about making our dreams become a reality. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification off to the right so that you can be notified every single time that I come out with brand new content for you guys. But without further ado, let me take y'all to the screen. All right, guys, so welcome back to the screen. Uh, I'm gonna show you a hook of a track that I created, um, did all the mixing aspect of it, but big disclaimer, right? So when we go about doing our mixing process, we gotta make sure that we have a good mix before we can be able to do this mastering, right? And if you haven't or you don't know how to do that, I got you. I got a link above or one of these little cards up here, right? Go check that out. And you can watch one of my mixing videos that I did a while back, which is pretty much very thorough, very, very straight to the point. I'm telling y'all what it is that y'all can do. Y'all can implement it if y'all want to, but go check that video out, all right? Um, but like I was saying before, you need to have a good mix before you can actually master, right? Um, and it's crucial because if you have a bad mix, when you start to master, it's gonna expose your music, right? That's just how it is. It's gonna expose it. It's gonna push out those frequencies that you thought that were good. And it's like also a learning curve too as well because once you go through that process, then you can go back, restart over again, and go through the whole steps again until you can get that right according to whatever sound that you have, right? So whenever you're doing your mix, make sure that your mix falls within the range of negative six to negative three. And when it falls into that range, then that's you're giving yourself the amount of headroom that you can be able to use whenever you want to do your mastering, right? So what is mastering? Mastering is pretty much in a nutshell, amplifying all of the sounds that you've created with inside of your mix and boosting and amplifying it to, you know, studio quality, you know, recording quality so that it doesn't sound so weak whenever you try to present this to artists or present this to other producers or whatever. It just gives it the full spectrum and just it, it just makes everything complete, right? It gives you the finishing product. So it's just basically amplifying the levels and I'm gonna show you that here in this video, right? But let's get to it. The reason why I got this hook highlighted is because you wanna work with the loudest portion of your, the loudest section of your song. If you work with one of the quietest sections and you try to amplify your sounds, the quietest sections, you gotta do a lot of work to get that you want your sound to be or the correct formula of where you want your, your, uh, your volume to be, okay? Um, and then once it gets to the hook, it's gonna be super loud, super distorted, it's gonna sound like crap, and that's a bad mix. A bad mastering, a bad everything, right? Not saying that the music is not good, but just the process of mixing and mastering is bad in general, right? So I'm gonna try to help y'all guys out with that. So, like I said, we got the hook highlighted. So the first plugin that we're gonna use, first off, all right, check this out. I hear that how that sounds now it sounds a little bit weak to me obviously there's no plugins on it this is just the mix but uh it's gonna sound beefed up and it's just gonna sound real good so i'm gonna show you all these four all right so let's get it first plugin we're gonna be talking about is gonna be our single band eq all right so we got a single band eq so essentially right so we're looking at the single band eq it may be confusing maybe not 
but let me just break it down to you so that you know what it is that you're, you're looking at, right? So you have your low cut, your low shelf, parametric, high shelf, and high cut, right? It's basically pretty much all the spectrums of your EQ, uh, your EQ channel, right? So take a look. As you see on the screen, this whole spectrum right here is exactly this. But what this one does is it, it controls the single band, self-explanatory, right? So we're gonna be listening, we're gonna be working with the low cut. So check out, check out how it sounds. Right? No bass whatsoever. There's, there's no low end frequencies. What we're gonna do is add that back, but we're not gonna be adding everything because we don't want to influence all the low end frequencies that can muddy up your, your actual track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just mess with the frequency spectrum right here, drop it down. You see how it's starting to become a little bit more full. You can start to hear the kicks. You can hear all that now. All right, so roughly I put mine around 25 to 30 given range and that's that for this uh for this plugin all right the next plugin we're going to be working with is going to be our compressor right so obviously you know how to get to the compressor if you really wanted to you can go to uh excuse me dynamics and then go to compressor but i'm gonna show y'all a quick way to be able to get to it if y'all didn't know this so if you look up right below the little settings little tab bar there's a little sliver right here click that bam there's your compressor right so now we're here at the compressor so what I want to show you is there is a, there's a preset that I use. Go to compressor tools, and then you'll go into platinum analog tape. So once you go into platinum analog tape, turn off your auto gain, make sure that you turn it off. And then now we're just gonna work with the threshold to be able to get our decompression to around negative three dBs. As close as we can, all right? We can't be perfect, but as close as we can. So check this out. And you already hear the difference just with the compressor in itself. So let's go ahead and work that out. Because right now it's sitting around maybe negative four, going on negative five. So you want to drop it down a little bit. So it's roughly hitting around that negative three spot. And that is that for the compressor, right? So let's go ahead and continue on. Like I said, we got two more left. It's pretty quick, right? The multipressor. Looks familiar kind of, doesn't it? Looks like the spectrum for your uh, your channel EQ. So with this with this pre uh, with this plugin, basically you can be able to amp up the specific frequencies a little bit more than the others because maybe it may be weak. It may be weak on this side and maybe real strong on the high ends or it may be weak on the high ends and uh you know decent on the low ends you just want to basically have that you know complete balance to give it that full fill uh but there is a preset that i use and it's called punchy drums punchy drums will give it give it a good punch depending on what type of tracks that you use in trap music you probably want to use punchy drums because that's the intent you want to make it big you want to make it sound full and punchy and whatever that it is you want it to be, right? So let's go ahead and check this out. It sounds, it sounds good right here it is, right? So, but I just wanna show y'all too as well that this is where you can do all of your controlling, right? And if you ever wanna to try to figure out a specific range, just solo out that spectrum. So that's what it would sound like, right? That's, that's pretty much self-explanatory, right? So you're just gauging up levels, making sure 
everything sounds good it sounds complete make sure you have headphones on too as well or just have a good good uh just make sure you have good headphones studio monitors whatever it is that you got you make it work okay but yeah that's that's what that plug-in is and last but not least excuse me we're gonna be talking about the adaptive limiter so with the adaptive limiter this is basically applying the ceiling to your music right so this is where you start to boost up the gain in your tracks to give it that full sound right but before that you do all of the levelings bringing down things bringing up things in different spectrums whatever sounds good what was what was peaking a little bit what you can dial down however right so from here this is what we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at the out ceiling so we're going to put the out ceiling at zero negative 0 0.1 right because anything uh it won't go anything above negative 0 0.1 so that's what you want right and then from here after you do that you want to take a look at this this little uh this section right here so the input reduction and output so let's let's go ahead and play it I just see the output is it's uh the limit the limiter is at zero negative point one it ain't going past that at all then you have your reduction basically depressing everything that you're creating uh whenever you have everything compact and now we're going to work with the gain all right so we're going to push up the gain to whatever i feel that is good but then there's also a general rule of thumb that i follow if i look at my reduction if my reduction i don't want my reduction to pass uh five 5 dBs. So when I go through this portion, this is where I basically how I gain or how I make my assessment to do a game or to up my game. So y'all see that, right? So I got my gain up to four dBs because it was already loud already as it is. Um, the reduction was about 4.6, as you see. That's what you see the, all the spec, uh, the metrics and everything, right? The output is at ne uh, negative 0 0.1. Again, like I said, this is Trip C certified. This is good for you to be able to put your stuff on your streaming websites. Hopefully this helped you out you learned something from this video and if you did go ahead and share that hit that like button hit the bell notification on to the right so that you can be notified every time that i come out with brand new content for you guys but, but happy new year hopefully y'all guys do great this year hopefully i do big and great better things than y'all did last year i know that's what i'm about because we're all about making our dreams become to reality guys but with that being said peace